put Jesus in, baby. She said, like, hey, I'm sorry you were born, baby. You know she was sick, but she woke up. And, and she's not sick no more, baby. I know. I know she is.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. At this time, we are going to commence the celebration for the memory of our dear daughter, sister, mother, friend, and colleague, Sharon Elizabeth Kemp. I must take this opportunity to welcome everyone on behalf of Sharon's family and a special greeting for those family in Jamaica who will be watching or at this time or unable to be here. Shall we all stand? Let us all bow our heads in reverence, God. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, first of all, Lord God, we want to acknowledge your presence, Lord God. We want to acknowledge you, Lord God, for you're still great, you're still mighty, you're still good, Lord God, and you're still in the healing business, Lord God. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we just ask right now that, first of all, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that your presence will be here right now, Lord God, in this moment, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, we're asking on you right now, Lord God, to touch the family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as we celebrate the life, oh God, of Miss Sharon, Lord God. I thank you and praise you, God, for the life that she lived, oh God, that it was well lived, oh God. We thank you and we praise you, Father God, for her family, Lord God, and her friends that all have gathered in here, Lord God, today just to celebrate her life, Lord God. Some will be mourning right now, Lord God, and some may be celebrating in their spirit, oh God. But I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that whatever it is in their hearts, oh God, that you would touch it right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, that you would just give everyone peace that surpasses understanding, oh God. That you would give the comfort of Lord God, which is the Holy Spirit, oh God, in this time of need, Lord God. And anything that they are in need of, oh God, that you will meet that need right now, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, God, that this service, oh God, will be glorified, oh God, put to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And that you will continue, Lord God, to do what you will continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, touch every speaker today, Lord God. Touch every leader today, Lord God. Touch every evangelist, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, let the word come forth, Lord God, with clarity and understanding, and we welcome your presence in here. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. 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 I want to take this opportunity to introduce to you Reverend Cheryl Jones and missionary Dennis Jones, their mother and daughter. Okay, they'll tell you about themselves later. Let's move on. Let's stand and sing the first song on the program, The Lord My Shepherd, I Not One. We'll sing, we use the tune of the happy one now. Can she, is she able to do it now? 
Okay, can you share this? Okay, we do the second lesson. You know, in time, see if Shelly's going to do the first lesson. Lesson is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 4. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and it's time to dance. Here endeth the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the second lesson come to us from Miss Carol Cunningham, a friend of Sharon. strength and your love for her, she knows it and she's proud of you. At, the, at, that, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed in me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. 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 We are moving to um, tribute to Sharon. At this time, Kristen uh, Mackenzie is going to sing on air for us for Sharon. She's unable to be here today and she's going to sing for us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. 
Take the time out to give us such a wonderful rendition. <coughs> We're moving on. Hallelujah. At this time, Miss Cunningham will come to give her tribute. Sharon we used to go to primary school and to high school. We um, graduated together and we remained friends all over the years. <clears throat> I went to see her on December the 28th and she was looking great. Walking around telling me she wanted to go to the hairdresser and she wanted to go to Jamaica to see her mom who is sick. And um, we had a talk, good talk about everything we used to do when we were young, and and I hugged her, and we hugged, and I said, you know, Sharon, you've been through a lot, and you're gonna be okay. And she said, yes. And when we hugged, I could feel the love coming from her body into my body. I don't know if you, if, if you understand what I'm saying. When we hug, she, she hold my hand, and she, put her head on my shoulder, and I felt her love just come right into yeah. me. Yeah. She was that kind of person. Yeah, she, was. she was loving and kind and happy, and always have a good word, always laughing, something yeah. to joke about yeah. every time. Yeah. You know, she came to my house a week before she got sick, and we were drinking beer, playing music, eating curry chicken. <laughs> sitting by outside the door with my husband and then a week after she called me told me she was in the hospital but even though she was sick she was sick boy carol 
You know, they put me in at this hospital. Why? I'm in a for what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, sure, because they say you're sick. <laughs> they say you're sick. The doctor, they know where they're talk about. <laughs> with the kids. And we, I talked to her and said, we're going to have lunch and bring the kids out with us. And she said, Carol, I would love that. And that, those were the last things we said to each other. But um, I love her. She's like a sister. People in Jamaica think we're sisters. They don't even know we're friends, the way we're, we're so close. Because she lived with us, Janelle, before she even had Janelle, Janelle lived with us. We have been close friends over the years. And if you know Sharon, people who know Sharon, it's a gift to know Sharon. Yes. And her happy spirit will always live with us. Amen. Amen. And that's how I want to remember her. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well said. I'm wondering if I really need to give my tribute. She said it all. <laughs> yeah. I met Sharon briefly. Um, um, in 2017 at East River Time in Village. Sharon, Sharon and myself, as Reverend Sharon Jones, we had an assignment. Yeah. But, you know, we grew like, we, we became so close as if I knew her all my life. She was just, Sharon was just a nice person you want to be around. You know, she was so jovial. She never had anything derogatory to say. It was just Sharon. So, um, you know, I think God saw that she was tired and a cure wasn't meant. So he just nicely took her and have her resting. Amen. Um, Amen. As her name suggests, Sharon, <coughs> she was a super person. She was hopeful. She was happy. She worked. When she worked, she worked with alacrity. She was always happy. You know, some people you're working, but you're just working because you have to work. That was not Sharon. She worked with alacrity. She was respectful, resourceful. And Sharon never said no. Sharon is here. We call her all the time for coverage. Amen. Why do I know? All right. And she's coming. Trust me, yeah, she's she coming. Was. She sure did. You know, we used to talk between the shift and we talked little things. And then she was planning to um, to move to Bower County with her daughter. Mm -hmm. There was something she needed to take care of. Yeah. And she said to me, Carol, I'm going to do the thing the right way. And I said to her, Sharon, it's not always, she always liked to do everything right. I said to her, sometimes we have to do the necessary thing, yeah. not the right thing. When yeah. she did things, she think about people most of the time, to be honest, not really herself. And this time I thought that she needed to do the necessary thing and not the right thing, but she insists. So anyway, she did the right thing. And it didn't still work in her favor. And she, she came back to me, she said, Carol, you know where you are telling me, say, I did true. You are always right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, long and short of it, the day when, the night she was going to leave, the Thursday was her last day to work with us. And the Wednesday, she bought two cups for me. And she said, one for you and one for T. That's my husband. Because they met. And my husband liked every, Sharon, everybody who met Sharon liked Sharon. Yes. So he gave, she gave me the two cups, and that night, I didn't look at the cup the same night. I went to home, and I, because I had a day job before I did a night job, so I was, you know, I'm always tired. So the, the Thursday, she didn't come to work. She called to say, Carol, you know, we can't come. So what happened now? She went to do a checkup the day. She said they had me, I said, but you know, tomorrow is cool. And it was um, test time, you know, I couldn't, I can't stay. So of course, I called the other, no, the other lady that doesn't say no, Sherry, <laughs> and she came. Anyway, I, I looked at the cup the day after, and the cup, I don't know, 
the cup uh, and the two cup one was written mistress right <laughs> and mrs always right yes. and i never she went to the hospital on thursday i never get to ask her what you meant when you gave up um with this cup that said mrs right mrs and mr always right because she gave she said you know she was so kind she was giving it because she wasn't gonna see me we weren't gonna meet again like she was going to bore cup and i was gonna remain in miami so she gave me, you know, those two cups, one for me and one for my husband. I we have it. I looked at it every day, Mrs. Wright and Mrs. Always Wright. But she did tell me that night, you know, when she didn't do the necessary thing and do the right thing. Carol, you're always right. So I want to really remember her the way she was. I haven't looked at her yet. I can't. Because if I look, I may break down like her daughter. Sharon was always, she was always there. Yes. You know, yes, always there. Yes, the three of us were, we were like three musketeers. One for all, all for Amen. one. Amen. You yes. know, we work together, we yes. cover each other's back. Yes. We yes. have the assignment and people, they looked up to us yes. in the facility because we always care. Yes. So, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At this time, we are going to sing um, two verses of the, the song, No Not One. After which, um, Miss, after which Miss Donna Foster will come with the eulogy. Acknowledgement. <laughs> Acknowledgement. I'm sorry. Acknowledgement. Yeah. Where's the acknowledgement? I'm sorry. So we have the acknowledgement before the song, No, Not One. I'm sorry. She hasn't really left you, even though it may seem so. She's gone to a heavenly home, and she's closer than you know. Her life on earth was very good, as earthly life could go. But paradise is so much more than anyone could know. We, the management and staff of the James C. Boyd Funeral Home, would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the family to thank each of you for coming out today. May God bless you. Now for the acknowledgement of the lovely floral arrangements. And for the many years they spent together, the good times, the laughter, and now the farewell. This lovely arrangement is presented on behalf of the family as well as this heart. Just a few words of consolations to the family to help encourage your hearts. Family. On another day, death perhaps came and lacerated your hearts, caused you to openly bleed with sorrow. But just grant me a moment, if you will, to have stitched those wounds with just a few verses of the gospel. Family, my Bible tells me that eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor have it entered into the hearts of man the thing that God has prepared for those that love him. In the book of John, at the 14th chapter, Jesus speaks and says, to let not your heart be troubled. Yes. He says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that you may be also. So I say unto you, family and friends, be not dismayed for whatever betides you, for God will take care of you. Whatever you need, the Lord will provide. God will take care of you. But you see, Sister Kemp has only done something what we all must do. Yes, right. For we are all crossing over one by one, fastly approaching our life setting sun, but we mustn't let God catch us with our works undone. Amen. For we are crossing over Hallelujah. one by one. Hallelujah. And in my conclusion, let me just add, it is these times that the storm clouds come and darken your bright and sunny days. Just humble your hearts into the Lord and recite this prayer. Lord, Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can. But most of all, 
the wisdom to know the difference between the two. At this time, we want to have a special presentation to the daughter. Ms. Janelle, would you come forward? Thank you. Love to remember your mom. Amen. Let's give her a round of applause as she comes. Amen. Amen. Our claps and our prayers just said that we love you and we're standing with you in this time and this hour of your need. Amen. Amen. We want to present this tapestry to you in love and memory of your mom. And our thoughts and prayers are this. In the days, the weeks, and the months to come, when everyone is gone and you find yourself feeling sad and blue, pull out your Bible and read it and the word is going to give you strength. Yes, it is. But on the nights that you get cold, Take this package of your mom and wrap it around you. And our prayers is that her memories will forever keep you warm. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Elizabeth Kemp, written by her cousin, Winston John Scale. 
It is said we understand death only after it has placed its hand on someone we love. And they fail. Mahatma Gandhi says, you do not know who is important to you until you actually lose them. And finally, no matter how prepared you think you are for death of a loved one, it still comes as a shock as it still hurts very deeply. That was written by Billy Graham. These three sayings have become so relevant to me, and I have no doubt some of you, as we gather both in person and online, to celebrate the life of my cousin, Sharon Kemp. Faye, as she was affectionately called, was born in Maine, St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, on June 4, 1964, to her mother, Esme Peter, and father, Roy Kemp. Her father was at the time an American citizen who returned to the United States, and as such, Sharon never really had a relationship with him. Sharon was the second child for her mother as she was preceded by a boy, Carl, and followed by three sisters, Sandra, Jacqueline, and Heather. It must be noted that her, mother, her brother was named after my older brother, Carl, and Sharon was given the same middle name as I was, Elizabeth. That's an example of the closeness of our two families. It was no surprise then what was to come after. Her early years were spent at home with her mother as soon as, uh, and as soon as the case with many children, she was adopted by her aunt, Hazel Jones, and her husband, my parents, and migrated to Kingston where she resided in Eugenie Park. Sharon and I, Winston Jones Gale, spent many years together. She was a sister I never had, and I believe she accepted me as her other sister. We shared so much together, and I was as, and, and I was as much there for her as she was for me. We shared a bond that Miles could not break. Sharon attended school at George Headley Primary and later on graduated to high school at Edith Dalton James High. Sharon completed high school and did additional education in data processing. She proceeded to start working at Jamaica Telephone Company for a number of years. It was while at Jamaica Telephone Company in 1986 that she had her only daughter, Janelle Fairman, whom she loves so much. The company downsized and so she was made redundant and after some time opted to migrate to Port Antonio to work and live. She later returned to Kingston with her daughter and this was followed by her decision to migrate to the United States of America. Sharon gained some training in geriatric caregiving and earned her living by pursuing that career for a number of years until she fell ill and had a number of major surgeries. She recovered well, but not to her full state. In December, when I last spoke to her, she was very upbeat and looking forward to a number of years. But alas, this was not to be as God had a higher calling. Sharon had one of the kindest hearts I knew. I have never asked her to do anything for me, and she says no. She was always there for me, and I tried the best I could to support her. Her smile was always so refreshing. She had one of the most beautiful smiles I've ever seen. My heart grieves as I reminisce on the days we spent together at Milton Avenue in Greeny Park. Sean was a lover of flowers, and I can recall us planting together flowers in our small garden at home. I can recall getting flowers from Sean on birthdays, and to date, I have plants at my house, which was given to me by Sean. Sean loved family and showed this to all her siblings. She loved her daughter Janelle dearly and enjoyed time they spent together. Over the years, she has, to the best of her ability, supported her, her daughter and her grandchildren and remained very proud of them all. She especially loved her granddaughter Kelly, and later then came Skylar. She had great plans for Kelly's future and was known to purchase an education plan for Kelly's college education. I hope and pray that she will endeavor to pursue a higher education as I believe her grandmother would be so proud. Sean had Sean has left behind her mother Esme, brother Carl, sisters, 
daughter Janelle, granddaughters Kalise and Skylar, cousins, nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends to celebrate her life and keep her memories in their hearts. It is with, it, it is with much love that we say goodbye to our dear Sharon. Love you always, my dear sister. Missing you so much. There are no goodbyes for us. Wherever you are, you will always be in our hearts. Mahatma Gandhi. Sharon, in life, we loved you dearly. In death, we love you still. In our hearts, you hold a place no one else ever will. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon you. Thank you. And now, Reverend Sharon Jones. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. My name is Evangelist Cheryl Jones, and we are here today to celebrate the life of our dear sister, mother, grandmother, and co-worker, Sister Sharon Cole. Your presence here today shows and proves that you all loved her very much. And to God be the glory, it shows that you also so support for this Weaver family. But we're not here to celebrate a loss. We're here to celebrate her life. And she has done what God has called her to do. He has called her home, praise be to God. And because of that, we should not have sadness. We should celebrate because she is where she is supposed to be, which is with Jesus. Amen? In 1 John chapter 3, verses 3, 17 through 19, Jesus once said unto to us, he said, let us not love in words or talk, but in deed and in truth. When he says indeed, it means it's the things that we have done and what we will do to help this family, praise God. Your presence here shows that you all will help this family. But how can we help this family, y'all say? Well, there's three things that I've learned. There's three lessons that we have learned. And they all start with the letter H, praise be to God. And the first one says, hush. So the family is going to want to talk about Sharon. They're going to want to talk about her memories. They're going to talk about the wonderful times that they had with this beautiful woman. So as us, we need to just listen to the family when they bring up memories about our dear sister. Praise be to God. The next one is hug. Sister Janelle, I pray that each and every one of us in this room will give you all the hugs that you may need. Because during this time, that is what you will need, my sister. So please know that everyone in here, including myself, will hug on you. We will love on you and let you know that you are not alone. Praise be to God. And the last one is, listen. So my sister is going to be calling and want to be talking about her mother, y'all. So we all, as a family and friends, we need to just talk and listen to whatever it is she has to say. Give her a shoulder to cry on when she starts to cry, praise be to God. Because that is what she's going to need. That is what this entire family is going to need, praise be to God. Sharon was such a wonderful person. And guess what, y'all? She has completed her task. And one day soon, all of us are going to be doing the same thing that my sister here has done. She has completed the task that God has given to her. And now she has done her work, and she is resting in the hands of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen? And that is where we are going to be one day. Praise be to God. We know that there's only three things that last in this world, and that is God. God will never leave us or never forsake us. So my sister Janelle, I want you to know that you will never be alone. And God will always be with you. And he will continue to keep you and cover you. He will never forsake all of us. But he will never forsake you, my sister. So rest assured that God is always with you. His words 
God's words never leave us. His words are always with us, praise be to God. So sister, again, God's word, what you do read his word, his words will give this family comfort. His word will give you comfort, my sister. And I pray that he does. The last thing is our soul. So Sharon's body is here, but her soul is not. Her soul has gone to be with the Father, amen? amen. And let us all remember that when we go and do what she has done, the task that she has completed, to praise be to God. That is the task that we also were going to complete. We cannot escape it. This is destined to for us. We all are going to go where Sharon is going. So let us all remember that when we do the job, the job that God has called us to do, he's going to say, my great and faithful servant, your job has been complete. Amen? Amen. And lastly, in my conclusion, I'm going to speak to you, especially Sister Janelle. I have met you for the first time today. I want you to know that God is going to continue to keep you. He's going to give you comfort during this time. Let me come down here so I can talk to her personally. Amen. This entire family, I want to speak to all you, but you, my sister, God is going to keep you. He's going to give you comfort. And if any of time that you need to cry, cry, because you know what your tears are? Your tears are prayers. Yes. And God yes. sees your prayers. He sees your tears. Remember, he knows your heart. Amen. So everything that you're going through, don't think that you're alone because you're not, my sister. Yes. Please know God is with you. Amen. I don't know you personally, but I want to let you know that I love you just like God loves you. I loved your mother. Me and her were friends for five years. Yes. So I know the pain that you are going through. But I want you to celebrate her life and let God put it in your heart that she is with him. Yeah. And guess what? She's watching you. And she's so proud of you. She used to talk about you to me all the time. How proud of her daughter and how proud of her grandchildren. So know that your mother is not here physically, but she's here with you here. I love you. May God continue to keep this family. You have my deepest condolences. Amen. 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 At this time, this um, missionary Denny's will pray for the family. I would like the family to be seated and the rest of us remain standing while she pray a special prayer for the family. Amen. Let us all stand. Father, Lord God, first of all, I want to tell you thank you, Jesus, for allowing us, oh God, to once again celebrate the life of Miss Sharon. Lord God, you see everyone that's standing in this building right now, Lord God, and you know what they are in need of right now, God. So I ask right now, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that you would meet that need, oh God, that you would supply that comfort, Lord God, that, th that they need right now in the name of Jesus, that you would trade in those sorrows, oh God, for your joy, oh God, because the joy of the Lord God is our strength. So I'm asking right now, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would just give us all joy. Give this family strength and yes, joy, O oh God, in the yes, name of Jesus, O oh God. The give them peace right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God, as they continue, Lord God, to endure, continue to walk forth, O oh God. I pray, Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus, that if anyone has not given their life to you, Lord Jesus, yes, that yes. they would have a heart, Lord God, yes, to give their life to you, yes, Father God, God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, so that you will indeed say, well done, my good and faithful servant, Lord God, because we know, God, that you are the only way, you are the truth, and you are the light, Lord God, and no one comes to the Father except through you, Father God. So we are asking in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, would draw, oh God, and pull, Lord God, on their hearts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, especially in this time, oh God, that first of all, that they would know, God, that they can lay all their burdens at the yes, altar, Lord yes, God, yes. that they can cast their cares upon you, Lord God, because you care for each and every one of them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you care for 
their hearts, oh God. You care for them, oh God. You care for them when they leave this building, oh God. You care for them, Lord God, when we're not around in the name of Jesus. So I'm asking, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you will just draw near to each and every last one of them, oh God, so that they will know who you are and trust in you, Lord God, and give their lives to you if they haven't, oh God. For those, oh God, who have given their lives to you, Lord God, keep them encouraged, oh God, and give them the strength, Lord God, and the words to say, oh God, to keep them lifted up, to continue to cover the family, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I just want to say thank you. I just want to praise you, God. And I just lift up your name, God, because there is none like you, O oh God. You are truly worthy to be praised, O oh God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for her daughter, and particularly, Lord, right now, God. And I just ask, God, that you would just, just surround her, Lord God, with your love and her grandchildren and the entire family, Lord God. But I just get, ask that you give her the strength, oh God, because I don't know, Lord God, how she's going to get through it on, on her own. But I know, God, with you, she's able to get through it, Lord God. So I pray for strength right now, God, for her, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, strength for her children, oh God. Help them, oh God, comfort their mom, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And I say these things in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory, praise things he has done. So love be the word that he gave us his son. Lower and higher and his Okay, let us, this is the last one. Let us come. To God be the glory.
those that are in attendance, in attendance that did not get a chance to view, y'all may come at this time, come right this way, we're going to view from feet to head, come right this way. All this in attendance that have not got a chance to view, you may come this way at this time for your final glimpse. All those that's going to be following going to the cemetery, we ask that you take one of these front attendant cards on your way out. If you're going to be going to the cemetery, we're going to ask that you take one of these on your way out. Hang it from your rear view mirror. Turn your headlights and flashes on, please. This will let everyone in the public know that you're a part of the processional. Amen? Amen. Congregation stand, please. Family stand. Evangelist, missionary, y'all come right this way. Thank you. 